for those of you who have followed the page, I have always had a soft spot for the uh, 2006, 2007 OMJMs. Uh, one of my first big purchases was a, an 06 OMJM. So I figured we'd go through it. I don't have anything official. I don't have, you know, uh, spec sheets in front of me. We're just gonna listen and enjoy it. And if you guys wanna throw some questions in the chat. Um, Aaron, what's going on, man? Uh, Jonas, what's going on? Uh, I, see, uh, I see some familiar names, so appreciate you guys um, uh, hopping on here. So anyway, uh, let's quickly go through aesthetics. And I'm glad to have an 06 because the first thing you can tell is the, uh, the toner. That's one of the biggest things that I have been a fan of is like the orange toner of these older, uh, of these older OMJMs. So um, these are almost a one-to-one -one match when it comes to colors, which I think is very, very cool. I think over the years, I don't think, I know over the years, uh, Martin has toyed with the toner. So nowadays, newer OMJMs look a bit more golden, a bit more uh, yellowish. And I think over time, they'll probably darken up and kind of oxidize or whatever takes place to make them go orange. But back in the early runs of these OMJMs, I'm thinking 06 to 2010 or 11, it was a much more orange uh, kind of look and feel here. So it also makes sense because the OM28JM produced only in 2003, three years later, I'm sure from a manufacturing and factory production standpoint, there was a lot of the same things used. So we'll start with the OMJM. Actually, let's start with the 28JM. <clears throat> so vintage toner, okay? Um, and if you guys don't want to run through the specs, like tell me, because most of you, if you're on this page, you know the specs of all this stuff. Uh, Engelman spruce top, rosewood back and sides, per usual on the spec sheets, you know, it's like premium or choice woods uh, for this guitar. Um, the aesthetics change, aesthetic differences are on the bridge with the stainless steel, or excuse me, aluminum, uh, outline. And then on the, um, headstock, the aluminum around the border there too. And of course you have the, uh, IWC big pilot watch logo here on the 12th fret. Other than that, um, most of the differences between the OMJM and the OM28JM are probably like under the hood. So again, like the choice tone woods or premium woods, um, bracing, uh, quarter inch scalloped in the 28JM, hybrid scalloped in the OMJM, um, bone nut and bone saddle on both, uh, or for the OM28JM, whereas the OMJM is a tusk saddle and um, I guess tusk nut or plastic nut. So, uh, and the bridge pins. I think these are bone bridge pins. If they're not from the factory, I put bone bridge pins in here. Um, so that's it, that's the 28JM. And we'll play these here in a second here. Uh, OMJM, very similar. Uh, like I said, different bracing. Uh, hybrid scalloped, but spec-wise pretty much the same. Standard uh, bridge plate, standard headstock, um, but still Engelman top, rosewood back and sides. Now when it comes to the differences, and this is what I have noticed over the years, and I've mainly had older OMJMs, I haven't had any of the newer, uh, the newer OMJMs, I always feel like the neck on the OMJMs is just slightly beefier. And beefier may not be the right word because the 28JM and the OMJM both have like thin, small, shallow profile necks, uh, but this one has always felt just a little bit fatter, maybe width-wise in my hand. Um, the other call-out that I've noticed and probably like one of the aesthetics differences, aesthetic differences from the toner color as well is the pick guard. So I don't know if my phone's gonna pick up on this but I like these older ones because uh, it has that like digitized pixelated Martin pick guard, which were prevalent in the early mid 2000s, no, probably late 90s, early 2000s. I don't think the, the phone's gonna pick up on it. But I wanna say in about 2011, they changed the pick guard from kind of this pixelated digital to more of a um, 
I think it's Del Mar. So if you look at pictures of older OMJMs versus new ones, you'll also see some differences in like the darkness of the pit guard, as well as how much kind of orange and see-through parts uh, make it up or make up the pit guard. Anyway, let's get into playing. How about that? Both of these guitars are strung with the Dario um, EXP lights. They were both switched last night, so we are like balls accurate. Um, <laughs> And I'm running through a Samson G-Track Pro uh, USB mic, hopefully on Instagram. It's not too compressed or sounds too crappy. Um, but I'll, I'll play a little bit on the OMJM. So again, 2006 OMJM. Uh, this is number 533. I shouldn't even have to say it if you're on this page. OMJM, still in production. They're up in the 6,000s, I think. The 28JM, they made 404 of them, only in the year 2003. Here's the OMJM. It sounds great. Sounds great, plays great. That's all with a pick. Let's go uh, without a pick here. Sounds great. It sounds great in the room. I hope it sounds good over um, over Instagram. The biggest thing that I've always said, because I've had the uh, uh, the luxury to play both of these guitars, is that the 28JM feels like the OMJM on a little bit of steroids. Everything just feels elevated slightly. Um, I think bass response. I think resonance. I mean, and it's, it's, it's a slight, it's a slight change. Uh, and until you get to have them both in your hand and play them, you wouldn't notice it. The OMJM is, is a great guitar. One of my favorites. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that this guitar is three years older. This guitar has also been to hell and back. This guitar has been played a ton. So it has opened up, it has dried out. It's gotten back to acclimation. Um, so this one sounds, I mean, not to brag about this guitar, this guitar sounds fucking amazing. Um, a lot of the playing was done before I owned it. So I think, you know, comparing a, a 28JM to an OMJM, unless you have an older OMJM, it's not a fair shake a lot of times because every 28JM was made in 2003. So we're pushing, uh, you know, we're pushing 20 years on these guitars. And even if you find one that wasn't played a ton, it's gonna to be aged, it's gonna open up, it's gonna sound that much better. This guitar just is a little more punchy, uh, and I attribute that again to the older age, probably. 
Um, little more bass response. I would assume on on the stream you can probably hear a little bit uh, a little bit with the bass response and just overall projection. It's a little bit louder of a guitar. Uh, let's go without a pick. I think on the low end of the spectrum, this thing just this thing just booms. Um, I've played this against some dreadnoughts, and the and the the low end of this twenty eight JM always kind of holds up with uh, with a dreadnought or a larger body guitar in terms of its. Um, It's such a versatile guitar. They both are. Um, let me think here. Another kind of aesthetic difference that I noticed last night in these two is that the uh, the rosewood back and sides, this one is a little bit lighter. I think a lot of that's due to age too. And again, like I said, just kind of being road worn. So this one, the OMJM here on my left, your right, uh, seems to have been cased most of its light. It's still pretty dark. Whereas the, uh, the 28JM, a little lighter kind of all throughout and just, it shows its age. Um, why don't I just smash it against the desk? That's great. Uh, the herringbone trim on both of them. Uh, style 45 rosette around the fret, around the, uh, the sound hole. Like I said, the pick guards here are nearly identical. This one's a little bit darker in the black, uh, or in the darker shades of it. But overall, um, they're, they're very close. So let's get some more time with the, with the OMJM. And let me check the chat here. Um... <laughs> If we're looking at a scale of one to 10 in terms of volume and projection, and just here in this crappy little bedroom that I'm in. Let's say this is a 10, just for arg argument's sake. I think the OMJM is probably around a seven, seven and a half. Still sounds great. If I if I hadn't heard the 28JM, I mean this one is just this is a, a great guitar. practice that before we get on here. It's just overall, it's just a little mellower of a guitar, the OMJM. There's something as well, and I've, I've mentioned this to uh, some friends before, other, other OM, uh, OM, people who've, <laughs> who've played both. Um, and it, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's psychological because the, uh, you know, the neck length and the specs are all the exact same. But for some reason on an OMJM, the strings always feel a little bit more kind of fluid to me, a little more rubbery. I don't know what that is. It could be in my head. <laughs> I know what 
definition of noise noise just kind of overall snap attack uh kind of vibration on the strings they're just maybe it's kind of like artificial or superficial sounds coming off but another quick thing that uh i have always been uh fascinated by with the older 28 or with, with the older omjms are the cases here so let me see if you can see that it's a maroon uh and some of them they look a little pinkish but kind of like this i say crushed velour that's probably not the right term but like this velour kind of uh reddish almost maroony pink case uh martin did away with these uh so if you get a a, a later model omjm they now have just the standard kind of uh very maroon no kind of shiny reflective aspects to it very similar to the 28 jm case which is the same it's just green and martin did away with these type of cases because they were bleeding onto the finish of some of the guitars so you don't see uh this interior uh material anymore on on current martins and i think from reading forums and uh and doing a little bit of research research uh, it was because it was staining some guitars, uh, that were staying, staying in the case. So that was the brief 20 minute unofficial comparison of these two guitars. They're both fantastic. Uh, like I said, the 28 JM just is elevated. Um, if this is a hundred percent, this is about 70, 75%. But, but if you don't even have this guitar in your consideration set, the OMJM is such a killer guitar. Um, uh, what else did I want to cover here? Um, I believe the OMJMs initially were mortise tenon joint, and I think the um, 28 JMs were dovetail. I don't subscribe to looking at that stuff and, and making that be my decision maker. I saw a quote one time and some guy was like, buy the guitar, don't buy the neck joint. And like, I don't have the time to argue the back and forth of the specs. Um, if it sounds good, it sounds good. I have, you know, sub thousand dollar guitars, sub $800 guitars that sound absolutely fantastic. And I've owned higher end guitars that sound, you know, dead on arrival. Um, so it, it really comes back to personal preference and of course what you can afford. I'm super lucky to have both of these. I've been lucky to have a few throughout the years. Um, but I don't want to... If you have an OMJM, you have a fucking fantastic guitar. This is like a holy grail. Super lucky to have it. Um, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with this guitar. And um, it's, it's a... I hate saying it's like a takedown version or an economical version because it is just like... If this was the only guitar I could own, or if you told me when I was young that this would be my, you know, my main guitar, what a what an instrument to have. So, plus the more you play them, the more they open up, the older they get, they're gonna sound incredible. That's just how the woods are gonna do. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna go to the chat here. Well, can I? Can I scroll? Oh, nice. Oh shit, I missed a lot. Sorry. 
Um, okay, okay. Did 2006 OMJMs have different specs to the new ones? Uh, kind of covered that. Tone, uh, the toner's a little different now, much lighter. The pick guard uh, are different. I think they have adjusted the mortise tendon um, neck joints. Aaron, you probably have more knowledge than me, or someone out here probably does, but I, I feel like Martin did something to kind of optimize the mortise tendon and have uh, upgraded that a little bit. So I would assume that touched on the OMJM. Um, where can someone buy one of these? If you mean an OMJM, you can buy them all day long from any uh, online guitar you know, retailer. The older ones you have to kind of keep an eye out for. <clears throat> 2006 was the first model year of the OMJM. That's what I love because that was my very first one. Um, uh, does anyone have the original spec sheet? Aaron, if you're talking about the 28JM, I have a bunch of old Martin collateral and I will, uh, I'll DM you um, some of that stuff. Um... I thought my OM28 JM Recreation smoked my 2021 JM. Must have been that guitar. Totally could have been. You're also playing a 2003 versus a 2021, so there's going to be some a bigger variance there versus a an 06 and an 03. John has been playing a new OM JM. This is I I I've, I've been meaning to post about this, but I'm I love seeing him. First off, I love seeing him play Silver Sky SEs. I love seeing him play the OMJM because like we were talking about, at the end of the day, those were killer instruments to begin with. Um, I also am scratching my head. I DM'd him like he'll ever respond. Like, hey, where are your 28 JM backups? Because uh, he has his main one, number 83, with the pick mark uh, or with the pick wear. But he has been playing those newer OMJMs. So you love to see it. Uh, Fareed said play cold play. Um, soon. It's a, some other time. Anthony, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Beautiful playing. Oh, thank you, the London guitarist. Um, you would know <laughs> about beautiful playing better than me. Um, okay, Sackety Sack. I have both the OM28JM and the OMJM. The craftsmanship of the 28 is a lot better. Huh. Um, uh, Patricio, Patricio, if I want to buy an old OMJM or OM28JM, what would you recommend? Well, <laughs> you're going to get an older OMJM for about one-fifth the price of a 28JM considering the current market value, which is nuts. Um, Anthony, it seems louder due to the age. You're talking about the 28JM, 100%. Um, let me keep scrolling down here. How long have I had the 28JM for? I've had this one for two or three years, um, but I have had a 28JM since 2009. At I mean, I've, I've bought and sold a ton, <clears throat> and uh, I've always had one. There was maybe a year gap where I didn't have one, and I desperately wanted one. So one's back, but I've had them basically since 2009. Um, how many Martins do you own? I own a handful. Uh, I'm lucky to have a few. But my main player is the 28JM, which sub $800 guitar, guitar <laughs> which sub $800 guitars are you talking about? Um, I have an old Martin, uh, it's a little small body, like a little LX, I think it's an LXME. Now granted, that's on a completely different level than any of these guitars here. But considering what it's made for, the fact that I can keep it out 24-7, not worry about humidity because it's not made of wood, um, it's a great sounding guitar. I put medium strings on it. Speaking of medium strings, um, the 28JM is actually braced to support medium strings. I did that a long time ago when I gigged more and I just my fingers were in better shape. But if you think it's loud with lights, uh, a 28JM set up for mediums absolutely hums. Um, would not recommend it for the OMJM though, because this has got the hybrid, I think it's hybrid scalloped bracing. It would probably work. I just wouldn't want to put, put that much tension on the top of this guitar. Um, curious as to what price you got the 28 for back in the day. Oof, this one hurts. My very first 28 JM, which was dead mint. Um, the original owner bought it from um elderly instruments it was their floor model at nam in 2003 
He sold it to me for $5,000, and I about shit a brick because that was so much money. That is a lot of money in general. But at the time, I was in my early 20s, and I needed help buying it. <coughs> and I was like, I'm never going to pay this back. I can't believe I did it. And so 5000 over the next couple of years, I was able to uh, snag a few under 5000 So I, would, I flipped those, sold those, made some money back, paid it off. Um, but over the years, as you guys know, I should go this way, the, the price just continues to creep up. Um, and uh, who knows where they're going to go? It's, it's incredible. Let's see here. Uh, Ren HW. Sorry if I missed, but... Is there a significant difference in tone between 28JM and OMJM? Uh, uh, where were you the past 27 minutes? I'm just kidding. Um, significant may be a strong word, but there is a difference. There is a difference once you're hearing them both. Um, hey, what's that guitar case stand behind you? That is the, um, I don't know what it's called. I got it on Amazon. It's a... Uh, I don't know. I'll find a link to it, but it's just like a, just, just go on Amazon and look up guitar rack or, uh, acoustic guitar rack. Um, I was tired of having things under beds and all around the house. So over there we have my, uh, 42 SC, uh, Laravie L09, Gibson EC30 Blues King Electro, and then the Tom DeLong Gibson ES333. So... Uh, those three guitars on the left, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of sentimental value in all my guitars, but those, especially the Gibson and the Larravee, have extreme sentimental value to me. Um, the, the art right above that is a, um, it's a gold record award for, uh, Bare Naked Ladies. That's what got me into playing guitar. They're two, uh, singer, excuse me, they're two guitarist, vocal, fuck am I saying? They're, they're two guitarists when I got into them. We're playing those two guitars right there, a Larravee and a Gibson. So uh, not those exact ones, but the, that identical model. So uh, we have those. I got a few other ones spread out around the house. Um, so yeah. All right. We're pushing up on 30 minutes here. I'm going to save this video and probably push it back out. I hope this was beneficial. I hope it sounded decent. I hope you guys got a little peek of the difference between the two guitars. Um, yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference <laughs> financially, economically, uh, and there is a difference between the tones. Um, but to give it a fair shake, I think an older OMJM, uh, visually and sound-wise, matches up to a 28JM a little bit better uh, than the newer ones. Not to poo-poo the new ones, because they're great, and they'll continue to sound good the more you play them. Um, I'm thinking about getting an OM28, but I'm super tempted to pay the extra for the OMJM. Uh, Andre, if you are uh, Andrea, sorry. Um, if you're a Mayer fan, um, you know, the OM jam is going to be tempting. The OM 28 has the one and three quarter nut width, uh, and the, the more V shaped neck profile, whereas the OM jam smaller and a little more shallow. And I think I've said this on other, uh, lives, but I believe, don't quote me, but I would, I would put money on it that. When the OM28JMs came out, I read something that said that at the time, um, John Mayer wanted a very natural transition on stage from going to an from an electric neck to an acoustic neck. So that's why uh, the specs for his acoustics um, had a one eleven sixteenths, a little smaller, so that transition wasn't as major. Um, so I don't know if that helps sway your opinion in any way. Uh, of course, go out and play one if you can, but. Um, the OMJM, Vintage Toner. Um, it's just a sweet looking guitar. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks for uh, hopping on and listening to me ramble about this. If you have any questions or clarity, DM me um, and uh, and we'll go from there. But here we are, my, my little ladies here. Um, thanks y'all for, for tuning in. Hope it was worthwhile. Have a happy Friday. Have a good weekend, wherever you are. And uh, I will be back at some point to play my corny three chord songs and, uh, and chat everything John Mayer Martins. All right. Peace.